Hey guys, it's Tate McRae here. I just had an interview at the Zach Sang Show. We talked about my new EP, my new song Stupid, my dance experience. So stay tuned and watch. Let's do this. Show. Hello, beautiful human. <laughs> we have Dan here, and hey. we welcome to the studio Tate McRae. Hey. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me. By the way, you can do it. At, like, do you want to move the pillows? You could do whatever you want. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. You have. I'll move the cat. You have complete and total <laughs> flexibility. <laughs> Thank you. So you're from Calgary, Canada. Yes. I love Canadians with every fiber of my being. <laughs> Thank you. They're great people. Thanks. <laughs> Justin Trudeau is pretty cool. Yep. Mounties are dope. Yes. Mounties? Yeah, they're the cops. Cops? Right? Well, we just call them cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're called Mounties, aren't okay. they? I, sometimes. I, I don't call them that. <laughs> yeah, because like you're cool and you're from there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so do you live in California, IA? <laughs> no, I just come here a lot. Yeah, how often are you going back and forth? Uh, like, every, like, two to three weeks or something you, uh, we're out here so it's like majority of the time we're in LA rather than Calgary how does your personal life change when you're traveling between two different places so many so often uh well school was a hassle <laughs> so go to public school oh really yeah so that's kind of tough but I mean as long as you like have your like good friends your personal life like can stay like okay Totally. When you're when you're traveling so much, it's just like the people that you don't know very well that it gets like weird with. <laughs> yeah, and, th and then it gets weirder with those people that you don't know very well. The bigger you get, yes, because you don't know why somebody's hanging around. Exactly, exactly. But you also run the risk of your friends looking at you differently. Yes, treating you differently. Yes, and then in turn changing your whole universe. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's weird, especially in high school. There's a lot of like different personalities. Uh, and it's like a lot to deal with because I'm like coming to LA and like I've like trying to build my career and then I go back to social class and it's like <laughs> <laughs> super weird. <laughs> it's just like a weird balance right now. Like at 16, it's just it's been an awkward transition. <laughs> Do you feel like music makes life at 16 easier or harder? Easier for sure. Why? I mean, music helps me cope with like everything. Like writing for me. I'm, like, so bad at talking about myself. Like, I can't, like, put my emotions into words, like, ever, except for, like, writing a song. So, like, music, like, writing for me is, like, my only way to, like, actually, like, tell people, like, what I'm actually feeling. And then listening to music is also just, like, getting other perspectives from other artists and stuff. How many songs do you write in a week? Well, so I have a YouTube channel, and I have to write, like, I release, like, an original song every single week. And then I come to L.A. and I'll write with, like, writers. So people haven't heard, like, so many of my songs because I've just been, like, writing the past, like, year and a half. But so many. Like, so many. What is the balance? Because, by the way, I love your YouTube channel. Thank you. And the way you write songs, I wanted to find my phone because I had a whole bunch of song titles okay. of yours that I was listening to that I was obsessed with. Okay. And you truly, I feel like you only have serious conversations through song. Yes. Oh, it's it's so hard because I'm such a, like, a, like, I don't, I just can't be serious with myself. And I have such a hard time, like, being, like, telling people, like, actual serious things about my life. Like, I'm always, like, talking about random things. But then it's, like, in my music is, like, the way I get, like, my deep side of me out and my emotional side. <laughs> so when it's time for you to write a song, like, okay, um, hold on. <laughs> When you're talking to your parents, the song oh. is called Dear Parents. You mm -hmm. release it on your YouTube. Mm -hmm. Do you, like, what, t take me through the moments leading up to you feeling like you need to even write that song. Well, <laughs> so I think of, like, I don't write them, like, with a specific, like, like titles. Like, I don't title my songs. That's why they're so random, like, Dear Parents. Like, I think of that when I'm creating, like, the thumbnail, like, <laughs> for my YouTube videos. <laughs> so I don't really ever know. Um... But that was, like, I had, like, written a lot of love songs. So I was just, like, I want to try and figure this out. And also, like, sometimes when you're, like, trying to explain things to your parents, they're just so oblivious, mm -hmm. and they just don't know how to, like, wrap it around their heads. And you're, like, but you've lived through everything. Everything that I'm doing right now, you've already lived through this. Why don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? <laughs> but, so, I mean, that was kind of just, like, 
talking to them without like going crazy in my words. What kind of message? What, what type of message were you trying to send to them? Well, okay, so my parents are super chill. Like they're like super cool and like awesome. Your mom is dope. Like she's she's so dope. <laughs> she, she, know something? Like she's out there in the lobby hanging out, and I, and I was like, <laughs> you can come in, and she's like, no, you know, I think. <laughs> You know, it's better for mom, like moms to be out here. <laughs> Some moms would be like you, like on you, like glue. You know yeah, what I mean? know. No, she's great. <laughs> she's she's chill. super chill. So is my dad. They're awesome. But I mean, I just know this from like obviously through my friends, and like there's a lot of situations people deal with where it's like their parents just like can't grasp anything and just like have no idea what they're trying to tell them. So I was like, I need to like figure how I'm supposed to put this into words because I'm like, I think a lot of people need to hear this. No one's ever written from this kind of perspective before. So is it the overall concept that you feel misunderstood by your parents as opposed to you trying to get through their heads one message or yeah, a couple focus messages? Well, this actually like this song got sparked. I said to my mom, I was like, I was in a really bad mood one day, and I said to her, she was like, you just need to fall in love, and then you're gonna be like. Then you're, you're, you need to get things over with, and then you'll be able to understand everything. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, I do not think that love is going to solve any of my problems right now. <laughs> I was like, that's such an odd comment. And it just got made me so mad because I was like, I don't think you understand any of my perspective right now. Like, you don't know who I'm talking to, who I, like, what I'm dealing with in my high school, like weird things. But I was like, I think people just like, there's a whole misunderstanding right now. And that was, like, a while ago, but we've, like, gotten a lot closer since then. But your mom could be seeing it from, like, you know, love brings experience <laughs> yeah. and heartbreak, and you learn from that type of Exactly. But I also don't think of it as, like, getting it over with. I think that's such a weird way to yeah. say things, you know? Just, just experience just, it just so you know. Just get it over with. I'm like, that's so strange. <laughs> I could never do that with a relationship. Have you experienced love or heartbreak yet? I mean, you are so young. Um, Kind of. Okay. Not, I mean, little, like, not crazy. So how do you write a ton of love songs if you've never been through that? <laughs> well, I think in my experience, like, you take little emotions that you have and you can, like, expand them into something, like, crazier. So I'll, like, picture myself in a whole other situation from, like, a little bit of heartbreak I felt oh. and just, like, make it so much bigger. So I'll just, like, put myself in someone else's position. Like, even in a room full of writers, I'll, like, talk to them about their experiences and, like, what kind of relationships they've been in and things like that. And then I'll be like, all right, well, if I was in that situation and if I was the other person, like, how would I feel? And then kind of right from there. <laughs> what is your writing style? Because you send very real, raw, honest messages. You tell real stories, but they're done very simply. Yeah. You know, it's not overly complicated. And if you listen, you can really understand. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, sometimes when I'm in, like, studios, I'll just, like, freestyle on the mic and usually it's my subconscious that like comes out so it's like whatever first comes to my head and I'll just like start making words and if there's like a cool concept then I'll just like start building off of that and usually I just take like a piano or an instrument and just like use a loop and then just start improvising when you experience something or like you have that conversation with your mom how soon after that conversation do you go and write a song well it's kind of so like my songs are kind of like my diary like, it's, like, weird because my diary's all over the internet, pretty much, <laughs> which is, like, super strange to think about. But, like, it's usually, like, right after a topic, like, right after something happens. I'll just, like, go to my room and get at it. <laughs> but it's, it, it, you're sharing your diary in your way. It's, yeah. It's not like you just vlogging your life or something. <laughs> yeah, there's Exactly. There's pieces of art that are attached to it. For sure. Not saying that vlogging isn't an art, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, it's just a different art <laughs> yes. than making real life music. Exactly. So you have an actual EP coming very soon. Yes. Before we get to that, you were a dancer. Yes. And you actually grew up in the Middle East? Uh, yeah, when I was like super young. Like, I spent like three years there. Like, remem like, were you able to remember it? No. Like, I remember like really, really small things. But like, that's it. I was like two. Why were you there? Uh, my dad's work. Cool. So we're there. And then as soon as I got back to Canada, that's when I started, like, dancing. Hey, real quick, I, I got to talk to you about school. If you're planning on going back to school, you should really ask yourself the following questions. Do you need flexibility to go to school on your schedule? Do you have transfer credits that you want to carry over with you to your new degree program? Or do you want a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answer yes to any of those questions, ASU really could be for you. Seriously, Arizona State University... It's a legitimate university. 
You know, it offers 200 highly ranked degree programs, 100% online. You could get the same exact degree that you would on campus from anywhere in the world, totally on your schedule. And if you're interested in more information, text Zach to 35517. Find out why the Wall Street Journal says that ASU is fifth in the nation for producing the most qualified graduates. 85% of their graduates actually get jobs within 90 days of graduation. So if you want to learn to grow, learn to succeed, learn to thrive, ASU really could be for you. Text Zach, Z-A-C-H, to 35517. That is Zach to 35517. Sorry. Why did you start dancing? My mom was a dancer all her life. So then I just started getting into dance classes. And at first I, like, hated it. Like, I, like, despised following direction and having to do what the teacher was telling me. Like, it was the worst thing ever. And then it was, like, not till, like, I was, like, eight. Till I just, like, one day said to my mom, I want to do this for real. Like, seriously. I want to start competing. I want to start taking this seriously. And um, then it was, like, since then I trained, like, 30 hours a week and constantly competing. And what changed, though? Like, what happened in your life that made you take it seriously? I mean, the in internet was a huge, like, influencer of that. Like, I would see all these dancers online and I'd watch videos and I'd be like, you know, I had, I was, I've always, I've always had big dreams, but it was like, I was very specific on setting goals. And like, once I have my eye on something, it's like, I'm going to go after it and work my butt off until I can get there. How do you, what is the transition like be between utilizing dance as a form of expression to writing records? It's weird. Um, they're totally different feelings, but they coincide, obviously. Yeah. I think the coolest part, like, now is, like, getting to write my own music and then put movement to it. Like, that's the craziest thing. Like, be able to create videos and bring my, like, s lyrics to life, which is super cool because, like, I've always been able to do that through my body but never, like, through music or, like, one or the other. Right. So that's, like, what I'm trying to do now is bring them together. But, I mean, dancing is, like, is, like, an undeniable feeling. Like, it's super, it's crazy. You can be, like, on stage and just, like, not really know what's happening ever and you're just like lost in it because you know it's like muscle memory combined with like you just feeling it yeah i mean you train so much like you're rehearsing for hours and hours and hours and then you get on stage and it's like you just gotta like wipe everything away how do you get from dancing to writing like w why did you <laughs> think that writing a song was the best way to express yourself um well, I've been, like, writing my whole life, kind of. I just, like, all my songs that I ever wrote never made sense until, like, I had started my YouTube channel. Um, well, I, like, on so I was on So You Think You Can Dance when I was 12. Yeah. And then I, like, did something on the show where they were, like, you need to do, like, a, a talent. And I was, like, like, what do I do? So I, like, wrote a random song, and it was, like, the first song I ever wrote that actually, like, kind of made sense. Oh. And then, like, six months later, I started this YouTube channel, and um, then I posted a song, and then it kind of went viral, and I've been just writing since then a lot. What happens in your life within those six months that makes <laughs> you, like, take this on in a serious way and replace dance, by the way? Well, I still dance, like, equally as much. So you're doing 30 hours of dance a week? Well, I do, like, music? I do like 20 hours of dance a week. So you cut it by 10. That's oh. a good shift. <laughs> well, with school, traveling, dancing, and I mean... And the now you're going to do music. Or yeah. Back then. Yeah. No, I mean, it's always been like a passion of mine. And every, I think when I was like growing up, it was like I would do a whole bunch of things. Like I would do like go a whole bunch of different routes in the dance world or the performing arts industry. And it was like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Mm -hmm. And it was like narrowing in. And it was like I just found myself like always going back to music and always going back to writing songs and creating and just like having a vision. And so, I think after I just, like, started to post it out online, I was like, oh, this is actually something really interesting. So It's really cool because your songs are so honest, and they're freaking great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, like, totally don't, it doesn't feel like they're written by a 16-year-old. Thank you. Well, yeah, I wanted to ask, so you're, a lot of the songs you post are written completely by you, right? Mm -hmm. So why are you now in these writing rooms with other people if you can write these incredible songs by yourself? Uh, well, I mean, I think that writing is, like, always, like, an always evolving. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like you can always, like, take your writing to the next level. I'm never going to feel satisfied with any of my songs. Like, I always look back and I'm like, okay, I've improved so much since then because I've learned from this person, this person, this person. I feel like no matter if you, like, don't like your writing style or not, you can always take something away from a writing session. And then also, like, producers, like... 
I don't have the capability to produce something and to make it like a big song, like a real song. So that's been like something that I've been like trying to figure out now is like how you get into a room with a producer and keep your own intentions and your own lyrics, but like have them build it up. But the only way to figure that out is by doing and yes. by like coming out of your comfort zone and yes, sharing your, your stories and your skills with other people. For sure. For sure. This EP, all the things I've never said. Yes. It's coming out January 24th. Uh-huh. How many songs on it? Five. All with the same producer, same writing team. Who worked on it? Different producers, different writers. So this was really you figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Trying to build a consistent base of people to have around. Yeah. No, it was like the past like year has definitely been very experimental. Figuring out like which guys I like to write with uh-huh. and which I don't and who I like work well with because it's a vulnerable process it is and you literally walk into a writing session and you go in there and you just tell your whole life story (laughs) like and you don't even know these people it's so weird it's so weird but you also get very close to them very fast when it's right when it's right otherwise you just feel like you've said way too much (laughs) are there any songs that were on your youtube first that will make it onto this ep or is it a whole different set of a whole different set wow yeah totally different I, but I do post a lot of my songs beforehand on my YouTube, like a week before, and then I'll post them. Would you ever take a song from your YouTube, like Dear Parents or Player, uh, and expand on that? I love Player. Great thank song, you. too. <laughs> thank you. I mean, probably not, because I feel like those videos are like those videos. Like, if they get but it's changed. Just, it's just you singing to a camera. Like, well, are you on an yeah. iPhone or like a DSLR or something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're literally just recorded on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but we cannot, we cannot touch it. It's, it's, well, people it's get, people get weird about that stuff. I get it. People are like, oh my God, that note was different. The whole song is wrecked. Uh. And they get very weird about it. Like, I've released a few of them and like, people are like, oh my gosh, it's different. What? Like, it just, like, changes it. Do you work those songs into a set list for um, a live show? Yes. Well, some of my new songs, for sure. But not, like, Player? Will Player be played? Uh, not Player. Do you I parents? have Express Friend. Okay. One Day, which is, like, the first song I ever put out. Cool. And then one more. And then the rest of my EP. So. Is One Day the song that went viral originally? Yes. Okay, so why did you decide to then take that one and make it a studio version? So that one I literally released, like, two weeks after I put it out on YouTube. Because it was like, I didn't even know how anything worked at that point. It was like, (laughs) okay, you want a live, you want a recorded version? Okay. So we like go into the recording studio, release it like a week later. Like it was so random. Like we just like put it out there. It was just so, I don't even know. It was just released like, it was all an accident, the entire thing. And now that's, that means, how many videos does that original one have? How many views does that have? Do you know? I think like around 30 million views. And you just recorded that in your bedroom. Uh-huh. And just threw it up on YouTube. And then like 50 million streams on Spotify. It's like, and it was so weird because it was just like, like me and my mom being like, we should record this. And then we like go <laughs> to a random studio and like put it together. Do you like, have siblings? I have a brother. How old is he? He's 18. What does he think? Um, He's pretty cool. Yeah. Does he think you're cool? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> He has his own life. He's a hockey player. Ah. So we're, we're very competitive. In but. Calgary. So you're competing on two different sets of ice, my friend. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. We have def- definitely very different lives, but um, still still competitive. <laughs> and your mom is obviously riding with you. Mm-hmm. She's my dance teacher. Okay. So. are you? You're still dancing? Mm-hmm. All the time when I go back. Really? Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> Do you dance for the live show? No. This is just singing. I mean, hopefully I can bring it into a live show eventually. But, like, all my videos right now have dancing in them, but not my live show yet. What's your greatest strength? Is it writing records? Is it dancing? Is it your vocals? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've never really been, like, super confident with, like, my vocals and stuff. Like, I don't... <laughs> my writing is basically... I wouldn't rate it or anything. I would just say it's my outlet. Like, I never really thought about it as it being, like, strength it's just been like always my outlet for everything and then my dancing i've just been working on since i was like super young so which area do you see that you have the most opportunity for growth right because like you've been dancing forever Uh uh-huh but you said like the more sessions you get into you learn from people right yes writing songs is really like a muscle oh yeah for sure i mean obviously (laughs) the possibilities are endless yeah but like you know no i mean 
for my writing, I definitely think that that's going to grow and, like, figuring out, like, what sounds you like and what music you're vibing for. Like, I think it changes, like, all the time. I mean, dancing, I feel like you just got to keep your technique up. And then it's, like, you're good. And you, like, got to be strong. It's like an athlete. Like, you just got to go to the gym. Like, you just got to be strong. But singing, I feel like you can, like, evolve so much. Can you, can you yeah. tap dance? Uh, <laughs> no. Wow. I used to. When I was super young, I tap danced. Wow. You but know who could tap dance? I can. <laughs> I think you can. <laughs> Call me when you can tap dance. Okay, okay, I will. Can you please describe what Visco is to us? Oh. What is it? Oh, Visco is, like, just an online app. But it's, like, photos. It's, like, Instagram? Yeah, it's just like a, it's like Instagram, but like you can't comment or like anything or oh. see who follows you. So we like that. We like this anonymous yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's chill. Is that, why do you post it? Do you post a Visco still? Uh, like sometimes. Would you still consider yourself a Visco girl? Oh, I think I'm the farthest from a Visco <laughs> girl. <laughs> I don't even know why that got around because I've never, I don't think I've ever worn a scrunchie. <laughs> Never like they're like. <laughs> Is that what I, Visco girls do? They wear scrunchies. They wear scrunchies, oversized T-shirts. Okay. Um, like they have like hydro flasks. I lose my water balls every day. How could I own one? <laughs> um, and they just like are super artsy and stuff. I just like can't take a photo for the life of me. So <laughs> I don't think I'm the definition of that. <laughs> if Visco was a song. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I wrote that was partially for clickbait. <laughs> it was a huge app at the time <laughs> So I was like this is kind of smart totally. um, That Play the system Exactly and it's also a very like emotional app Like people will republish like really sad quotes yeah. And like you can get like A lot of inspiration from there So you were feeling other people's sadness To create yes, records exactly. So I was like getting I was like seeing all my friends republish all this really sad stuff I was like this is perfect so <laughs> I'm just, just gonna <laughs> soak this in for hours Exactly <laughs> so I just created a song. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Do you feel like you're at your best when you're soaking in somebody else's story and being like super empathetic or when you're expressing yourself? Mm, depends. What's easier? Uh, someone else's story for sure. Why? Probably because you have a different perspective on it. Like I feel like when you're talking about yourself, you can be so caught up in like your emotions of it yeah. that it's like you don't know what to say. You like don't know what you feel at all. But Unless part of processing like, it is writing it out. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes it's easier to write it like an, a year later after something happened because then it's like you actually have a clear vision of like how you felt in the situation. But sometimes in the moment, it's like, well, I have no idea how I feel about that person or how I feel about myself or about the entire situation. It's like kind of like overwhelming in some way. But writing about other people, it's like, oh, I know what this looks like on the outside and you can like pick it apart easy. What gives you the best songs? In your opinion? Mm, I mean, for me, obviously, songs about myself click, like, hit the hardest. Because I, like, listen to it back, and I'm like, damn, that hit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's your life in a song. And it's, like, really, really personal. So that, like, for me is the closest. And I feel like whatever I connect with, like, my people who listen to my music would connect with. Is there any song that you listen to purposefully to remind yourself of things? Um, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just listen to your songs if you feel like really sad and you're thinking about a specific person and you've written songs about this specific person, you can like listen to it and make yourself more sad. <laughs> so, you're speaking from experience. Yes. <laughs> would would yes. stupid be one of those songs? Yes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, kind of. Not really. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that song's kind of like, kind of hits. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, it was written about someone. Okay, obviously. that's what we were going to do. <laughs> yeah. Was it written about you, or was that from somebody else's perspective? No, it was it was written about someone from okay. me. Okay. Yeah. And you must have you must have really liked this guy. <laughs> well, kinda. And that's where the thing is like <laughs> it gets taken like way out of perspective because it's like small situation that like gets made so big into a huge issue. It's like over dramatized to the max. But that's for the song. Yes. Sometimes you need to do that. Exactly. exactly. But, it, but is it is toxic to get there and to build it into this overdramatic thing? Because then a at a certain point, you start believing it. Oh, for sure. That's the thing. Like, 
sometimes I can like think things are way bigger than they actually are because I've written a song about it and made it such a big deal. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, you And then I'm yourself. like, why am I so attached to this person? Oh, because I've written songs about them. You believe your own hype. Exactly. That's what happens. <laughs> it's so weird. So I does this it. guy that's stupid was written about, does he know? No. Oh, but... No. I would not tell him. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't tell anyone who my songs were about. Well, so obviously you have an EP coming. Uh, all the things that you haven't said, right? Yeah. Uh, th- these songs, nobody knows no. any of the topics mm. that you're covering? Mm. Are they all songs written from your perspective about you? Um, yes, they all are. So, I, I mean, like, a blessing and a curse will be your release day because everybody close to you, they're going to listen to these songs and try to figure out what you're saying. Exactly. Like, I released one song called All My Friends Are Fake. <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> just because just, just my friends were like, are you serious? And I was like, well, no, it's not about you, I promise. Who's it about? Well, <laughs> I will never say. That would be so bad. Is it about your new Hollywood friends that you were talking about earlier? No. No. It's got to be about someone. Your new fancy friends. They're about, they're about old friends. Uh-huh. Oh. Mm. That I was, like, super close with for a long time. And then just, like... What, ch- <laughs> what changed in your life that maybe caused a separation? Uh, I mean, I hate drama. Like, I try to avoid it at all costs. Like, it's like, I hate it. So I'm like, if something, like, is causing drama in my life i'm just gonna like stand an arm distance away from them and just like keep my distance um so i mean they just started getting weird i like it was it was like they were they were talking like behind my back and like it was just like weird high school stuff that was like unnecessary after you started blowing up on youtube yeah like it was it was like after i started to find success in like dancing and singing it was like they just got weird and I was like, why are you changing? Like, this is super weird. I don't want this to happen. And then just like, I don't know. I just distanced. We just got like really far apart. Well, that stuff is for the best a yeah. lot of the times. Oh, for sure. And I'm like, everything happens for a reason. So. You think it was jealousy? Maybe. I mean, I don't know what their like intentions were. But um, all I know is that I didn't need to be in that situation mm-hmm. anymore. And I was like, I can like remove myself and not go crazy over you guys. Then you I, can write a song about it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, that was good. But, it was, but, like, it's these changes in life that usually, like, weed out the good from the bad. For sure. And, like, writing songs, like, makes me, like, also see things and be like, oh, now I know what I need to do. It, like, gives you, like, a much clearer perspective on things. So do you know the right person to keep around you? Because mm-hmm. you are the company you keep. Yeah, no, I'm, like, I'm very good at, like, telling who's real and who's not. Like, I just have very good, like, intuition. So, obviously, I can, like, sense if people are, if I'm, like, have them around me all the time or not. But it also takes me a long time to, like, open up to people. So, but once I do, I'm you're going to be, like, really close to me for a long time. Unless you change in the middle of things. Exactly. Unless you go crazy on me. <laughs> we don't want you. <laughs> then, no. <laughs> but, by the way, like, it's dealing with those types of people that ends up building up your intuition. Yes, for sure. You know, it has yeah. to build somewhere. Exactly. All the things I've never said. Mm-hmm. You excited for this EP? Yeah, because I got to be honest, a lot of times people come in here and I tell them I like their stuff and you know, it's whatever. But like yours is really good. Thank you. Like the songs are good. Your voice is good. I really do. I really do enjoy it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So is this EP all the things not, you're now saying because you've never said it? Is that the whole point? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like, so I have this wall in my room and I like write everything on it. So I like, my parents have let me like take a Sharpie and like, write anything on i mean it's so cheesy now because i started when i was 13 so i'm like oh god why did i put that on my wall (laughs) now anyone who walks in my room has to read that (laughs) um but that's like what it was kind of inspired like that was the first thing i ever wrote on the wall was like all the things i never said and just like wow that's how i think of my writing it's just like things i can't put into words and that's what the cp is Mm -hmm. but do you want the people who these songs are intended to to reach those people Not necessarily. I feel like I just want other people to relate to it. I want people to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going through the exact same situation. And that's how I feel like lyrics and songs should be like. That people can listen to it and be like, oh my God, that's my life. You know, that's my favorite when people can do that. It's the emotion around the event that people can relate to, not the catalyst for it. Exactly. I get it. Yeah. 
Real talk, I think you're going to be a superstar. <laughs> Thank you. Really? Thank you. I mean, you're wearing a Canadian tuxedo, so you're off to the star. <laughs> and <Thanks>. she's Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But beyond that, like, your stories are great. Thank you. Your vibe is the right amount of chill. Thank you. You are proper. You are cool as f***. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot. Yeah, like, real talk, I think she's going to be a superstar. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. How do you feel about the Billie Eilish comparisons? Um, I mean, I love her. She's amazing. Uh, I do think we're very different, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I think our sounds oh, yeah. are very different, and our lyrics are super different. The only reason people are saying that is because you're young, and you covered her songs. Oh, yeah. I have in the past. And, like, I think people, like, sometimes say we, like, look alike, which is strange, because I don't have green hair. But <laughs> your eyes are blue, but she's also more pale. Yeah, I think I don't I don't see it. I think it's like it's strange, but it's, it's called bull squash. Everybody does this. <laughs> you know, when Justin Bieber first came out, and yeah, I'm old enough to mm -hmm. be like, when Justin Bieber first came out, every other male after him to create any sort of music was like Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber. Exactly. Justin Bieber type. Yes. And Billie Eilish is going to attract the exact same stuff because you're young. Mm -hmm. You have a very organic growth about your career yeah and uh and by organic i mean digitally you know you guys have played the, the game yeah you've spread your art through the internet uh-huh so i mean yeah I, that's i feel like that's just gonna happen mm -hmm. the comparisons just because she's also like so successful right now and doing so good so i mean obviously she's gonna like any new artist i feel like is gonna have somewhat of like a comparison to her any young female is gonna be in the glow exactly <laughs> exactly you know, does that make sense to you? Yeah, no, I think I think it's a good thing because there's a lot of young people, not just females, that want to be musicians, but they would never get that comparison because it sounds very like generic pop, and you're doing something different. Yeah. So I think it's like a good a good comparison. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. But are you gonna keep this acoustic vibe to all of the records you put out there? I mean, for sure, I have definitely just like get a vibe from songs. I need it to be like. A specific amount of chill in order for me to actually connect with it like if there's so much going on huh. I feel like it takes away from like the lyrics of the song but I'm like if it's needed like depends on like what the lyrics are what the song is like um, but for now for sure yeah EP coming yep all the things I've never said <laughs> yeah. are all these songs somewhere on your wall in your bedroom somewhat like little parts of it yes for sure that's cool yeah it's like weird to look at my wall and be like, oh my God, I wrote that one about that person and that person and that person. So it's weird. Is this whole thing weird? Yeah, it's crazy. It's super, it's super, it's totally different world. It's just like trying to figure out like where my lane is and everything. Yeah, because like it's, there's numerous lanes that people have to figure out in life. Yes. Personal, professional, all that kind of stuff. And yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been very, very cool though. And I'm learning so much. And, like, just getting to do everything I love has just been so amazing and really, really fun. Really fun. So. I want to say, and your tour is, is it sold out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. I'm excited. It'll be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Any of it stressful? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, like, I, like, try to, I get on all the calls. I do, a lot, I'm involved in a lot of the treatments of videos. And, like, I want everything to be, like, very specific to, like, what I'm thinking. So it's not like random and just thrown out there. So obviously it's like a lot of stress, especially with like balancing my personal life on top of that. Uh, but I, I enjoy it. I feel like I work best <laughs> under stress. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But you do have a lot of lanes to figure out. Professional, personal. Mm -hmm. It's a wild time to be Tate McRae. The name <laughs> of a superstar, by the way. <laughs> well, yeah, I what also an effing name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is that a real name? Yep. <laughs> That's my name. You were given that at birth? Yes. 16 years ago? Yes. <laughs> wow. Lucky you. Thanks. Uh, Thank I, you. I did want to ask about this stupid music video. <laughs> Are you calling your music video stupid? Yeah, what? <laughs> oh, no, but it did come across like that. <laughs> um, it, can you explain, like, the paint coming out of the hair? Oh, yeah, that's VFX. So okay. it's, like, just, like, it was done visually after. And then how does that tie in with the song? Uh, <laughs> well, um, well, originally, like, the original treatment was supposed to be, like, tying along with, like, the EP, like, all the things I never said. It was supposed to be, like, words coming out of my head, and it was okay. supposed to be, like, I don't know, just, like, me just, like, lying there singing, and it just, like, shooting out of my brain. <laughs> but it, it turned into goo, so. <laughs> all right. So 
That's what happened. Well, it works. It looks cool. <laughs> Thank you. Did Dan, a good job. Dan approved. Oh, Thank stop you. Stop saying that. It's very rare, Tate <laughs> McRae, to get a Dan approval on anything. Awesome. Oh, you, I, you did voice over acting for Nickelodeon. Yes. Are you still that ragdoll? No. <laughs> I was when I was seven. Oh, that's so long ago. I know. <laughs> it's a really long time ago. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. La La Loopsie. Yeah. I did a lot of voiceovers when I was very young. I had a very high-pitched, like, animated voice. This was perfect. But you have, like, a very unique speaking voice. You have, like, a little <laughs> lisp that, like, is not overbearing, <laughs> but the right amount. My Invisalign? I was going to say, she's wearing Invisalign. <laughs> you ass. Stop it. Don't curse. She's 16. She said sh <laughs> She did say the SH word. My bad. That was a lot for me to handle. Was it? I didn't know I, I didn't know you had your, your Invisalign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dan yeah. talks to me with his Invisalign in too. Yeah, I take them out. Yeah, I have them, but I take them out now for this, so I don't have a lisp. Oh, okay, yeah, that's I didn't take my out. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, there's so much character in her speech. <laughs> like, there's no. something really special and unique. There. <laughs> ah, it's the plastic in my mouth. Right now. <laughs> I do like how you say dance, though. Dance. Dance. Yeah, that's dance. Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Yeah. Ah, a boot. <laughs> About Toronto, Toronto. Oh well, this is probably just like a dumb question, but yeah, <laughs> great. Speaking of Canada and stuff, like, what yeah. was it like when you did that little Justin? Be not little, it was probably big. The Justin Bieber thing. Um, what Justin Bieber thing? Well, when I was twelve, I like. <laughs> yeah, we're, go we're going way back here. <laughs> four years. We're going way back. Oh wait, jeez, you're so young. <laughs> oh my God, only four years. When I was twelve, I danced with Justin Bieber at his concert. Oh, he would have the kids come to different stops. Yes. So I was like. That was, like, my first ever concert I'd ever been to. So I was, like, in the pit, and I was like, it's pretty great. I love concerts. Like, <laughs> you're on stage, you meet Justin. Every like, concert you go to, Justin Bieber will be there. That was perfect. <laughs> it was so great. It was, like, really stressful, though, because at the time, when I was on stage, the first episode of So You Think You Can Dance was airing. Oh, and, like, oh. I was, like, stressed because I'm, like, you know, it's, like, your first time, like, on TV. It's, like, weird. You're, like, what if they make me look terrible? Well, then just, we just had to watch it after, but it was just, like, so stressful that whole night. Man, so you're on TV for the first time while actually on stage with Justin Bieber. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty big night, huh? It was a big night, yep. What tour cool. stop did you dance at? Calgary. Oh, hometown. <laughs> hometown show. Hometown. Oh, that was the Purpose Tour. Yes. I went to that show. So did I. <laughs> I. I was not eight years old or 12 or <laughs> whatever you were. <laughs> yeah. That Purpose album is phenomenal. So good. Another it Dan really approved uh, body of work. You're up there with Justin Bieber on the Dan approved <laughs> wow. list. Um, but I want to ask: Have you uh, gotten a chance? What? Go. Have you gotten a chance to talk to him? And after that, or is that just a one time thing? Because now you're you're a musician now. Uh, one time thing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him since then. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. Dan believes Justin Bieber has a an accurate account of all the musicians in the world. That's and not he true. He chooses to reach out to all of them <laughs> hey, on a yearly basis. I don't basis. know. <laughs> Maybe it's a Canadian thing. Maybe. Yeah. Actually, let me correct that. He has a. a, a good feel on all the Canadian musicians mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. And he sends yearly notes to hey, them. Hey, you're mocking my question, but I stand <laughs> by it. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I saw a yeah. Haley. <laughs> Hasn't happened, though. Hasn't happened. But maybe next time you come in here, you're going to be like, hey, so last time we were talking about this, and now That'd be sick. we're friends. I'll let you know. Thank you. A lot of things <laughs> do get manifested from this couch. Okay. And I am kind of convinced that Justin Bieber has, a, he has his fingers on the pulse of the videos that we up, upload. That'd be great. Yes. That'd be so great. <laughs> we'll put him in we'll put him in the title for clickbait. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Tate McRae, please listen to her EP. Sister's cool. <sighs> All the things I've never said. I, I hope this is the first of many visits. I hope so too. Yeah. So uh keep keep making music. Thank you. Because I know Dan and I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> awesome. Actually, correction. I ain't going anywhere. Tate McRae, everybody. <laughs> is that a threat? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might leave me, bro. Okay. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> hey, beautiful human, thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot, so we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please, subscribe, and uh, notifications, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.